We're joined now by our assistant sports director, Franz Ross. Thanks for being here, Franz. Thanks, Asia and Alex. The first half last weekend against Buffalo, Ohio State looked to be a team that may have scored 70 points by the end of the first half. However, as head coach Urban Meyer mentioned, momentum was responsible for the Buckeyes' slow second half. OSU hopes to carry a new momentum this weekend when they welcome San Diego State of the Mountain West Conference to the Horseshoe this Saturday. The Aztecs enter this weekend coming off a 40-19 upset from the FCS opponent, Eastern Illinois. On Monday, Urban Meyer claims that the SDSU running back, Adam Muema, was injured last weekend, maybe the toughest running back they face all season. Meyer is no stranger to San Diego State head coach Rick Rocky Long. The two head coach against each other in 2003 and 2004, when Meyer was head coach at Utah and Long at New Mexico. You know, I've coached against uh, Rocky Long before. Excellent football coach, tough. Uh, guys play real hard, and, and they won, I believe, nine games last year, which is not surprising for his coach teams. I see a defense, it's an odd stack, 3-3-5 three, three, defense that they blitz, bring per, uh, high percentage of pressures or movement, their chaos defense that play really hard with some good players. In offense, I think they kind of stepped out of their comfort zone a little bit. They just threw, a, I want to say, 63 times or something like that. There will be good news this weekend for Ohio State. The Buckeyes welcome back running back Rob Smith and quarterback Bradley Roby, in which both set out game one due to suspension. It is not yet known just how much time these two players will see on the field versus the Aztecs. The season opener was a scorcher, but fans said the Buckeyes could take that and bring it. Asia Gore has the story. Buckeye fans are always fired up, but 90 degree temperatures left the nearly 104,000 fans sweating as bad as the athletes. I mean, if you don't know this, I'm sweating a little bit, but I will never miss a game. I'll never miss a game. This heat is nothing. We've been in freezing cold weather and scalding hot weather. Nothing stops us. The season opener against Buffalo brought out big fans. We have tickets to all the games this year. We'll be at every single game. Matched by equally as big concession options. Custom made two pound pretzel. You can essentially feed four people. But it's the band, not the pretzel, that sold a halftime show with Disney favorites. And just like in Disney films, it was a happily ever after for the Buckeyes with a 40 to 20 win. For Buckeye TV Sports, I'm Asia Gore. As Asia told us, the heat didn't stop the fans from coming out and cheering on the Buckeyes. But some students suffered from overheating. Alice Bacani has the story. Buckeye fans are known for braving all kinds of weather, but just how hot does it have to be before they can't take the heat? It was very hot. Um, I had to leave during the third quarter because it was so hot. We could feel everyone's sweat sloshing on everyone. According to the Columbus Dispatch, 160 people were treated during the game by American Red Cross volunteers, and most were for heat-related issues. If it was cooler, I would have stayed the whole time, and it would have been a lot better. Um, there were times when I felt like I had to sit down because I thought I was going to faint. Um, a lot of people had to sit down, actually. So Yeah, it was a great game, but everyone was really squished together in the stands, and everyone kept going to get water, and it was really nice because they had like the courtesy cups of water, but it was really, really hot, so it made it a longer game. But for some fans, heat isn't an issue when it comes to cheering on the Buckeyes. It was, too, it was hot, but it wasn't too hot. Um, I think when you're watching Ohio State, basically can go through any weather um, and still have a good time. Reporting for Buckeye TV, I'm Alice Bacani. When former quarterback Terrell Pryor's name is mentioned on campus, usually students don't have many good things to say about the former Rose Bowl MVP. Pryor marked his legacy as the man centered around the tattoo gate, and the divorce between Ohio State and Pryor was nothing close to sweet. After Raiders took a chance on him in 2011 in the supplemental draft, many wondered if he would ever get a chance to get the starting quarterback job. Well, three years later, Terrell Pryor has earned his chance. The San Francisco Chronicle reported Monday that Pryor will get the nod in week one against the Colts of Indianapolis on Sunday, beating out Matt Flynn in trading camp for the starting job. Despite reports, the Oakland Raiders haven't made a formal announcement in regards to the former Ohio State quarterback. The Raiders and Colts kick off Sunday at 1 p.m. On Tuesday, Buckeye Hoops All-American and current Boston Celtic Jaron Sullinger was arrested for an alleged domestic assault on his girlfriend that happened last Saturday evening. Tuesday morning, Sullinger appeared before a judge in Walham District Court and pleaded not guilty to assault and battery, intimidation of a witness, and destruction of personal property. In a statement released by Sollinger, 
This situation has brought both sorrow and embarrassment to my girlfriend, my family, the Boston Celtics organization, my teammates, and my fans. To all of you, I apologize from the bottom of my heart. Now for a look at our weekly weather forecast from our meteorologist, Tyler Seabree. Thanks guys, and I've got good news over here in the weather department. You can see we've got beautiful blue skies this morning, allowing those temperatures to warm up already in the mid 60s, which is about where we topped out yesterday for an afternoon high because of all the cloud cover we saw around. Now we've got sunny skies boosting those temperatures up rather quickly, and we'll see temperatures push all the way into the low 80s today. And the Ohio radar shows why we're seeing all that sunshine. There's no rain to be talked about in Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky. You've got to go all the way down to the Cumberland Plateau and to the state of Tennessee before you start seeing any rainfall. And even that is very light this morning. As we expand out and take a look at the United States as a whole, as on the radar and satellite, you can see we've got clear skies basically from the Mississippi River points east all the way to the eastern seaboard. However, if you look up into the Great Lakes area, you can see some clouds kind of forming a line and pushing to the south southeast in that general direction towards us. That is a cold front and I'm going to call it a cool front because it is not it's not going to bring much cold air, nor is it going to bring any precipitation. It's just going to make those temperatures drop a few degrees tomorrow, as you'll see in the seven day coming up. That's going to continue pushing to the south. And once we get behind that this morning or tomorrow morning, temperatures will be about five to seven degrees cooler compared to what we see today. Futurecast does a good job of painting that. You can see right now we're in the clear skies and a little bit of clouds form and push to our south. It, and it doesn't bring any precipitation into the area either, which is what I'm thinking. Just a few clouds tonight into tomorrow morning and then a few cooler temperatures tomorrow as well across the state of Ohio. So for today, what am I thinking? Well, noon to 3 p.m. I'm expecting temperatures to push into the low to upper 70s under sunny skies. 6 p.m. we're still in the upper 70s under sunny skies and then 9 p.m. the night we drop rather quickly into the low 70s as the sun sets and those skies remain clear. So for tonight 60 degrees clear skies and nice west winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. It'll be a very nice night for sleep. Give that air conditioning a continued rest and it'll be a nice night to open those windows out there. For Thursday, there's that cooler temperature of 76 under mostly sunny skies. So a few more clouds than we're seeing today. Sunny skies for the most part, it will be a little cooler, like I said, and winds will not be a factor tomorrow either. As we expand and take a look at your Buckeye five day forecast, there's the 76 and mostly sunny for your Thursday. Friday, we're going to do it all over again, except a degree warmer or 77. Saturday, we'll add a few clouds, but we'll also increase those temps to the low 80s. Sunday, there's a very slight chance of isolated shower or thunderstorm, but it'll be warm and even a little humid highs in the mid 80s. And then Monday, we cool off a few degrees into the low 80s, but it'll be partly cloudy again. So it'll be nice out there at the beginning of your next week. Well, that's your Buckeye News Now weather update. Back to you guys in the studio. That's all we have for this episode of Buckeye News Now. I'm Asia Gore. And I'm Alice Bacani. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm turning and looking. Hey, By the guys. way, is, like, am I going to be doing this, like, every week? I'm not sure. Okay, we'll talk to Brad like, about that. It's like, oh, can you do it this week? Like, I don't really care. Yeah, talk to Brad about that. It's, it's